This is a look at a little giant 25 pound old style trip hammer. It is serial number 284 built in 1910. Uh, I was asked to kind of uh, take this out of my collection, bring it in the house, power it up and see what it needed. And I did take a fairly close look at it and uh, uh, ran it the other day. We had a Badger Blacksmiths meeting here and it works. Uh, the question was what does it need and probably the biggest thing that it needs is to have the uh, lower die replaced. Uh, in this particular uh, situation uh, this uh, blacksmith bought this really narrow die it's no wider than the upper die. They were thinking they'd save money on tool steel, but what they didn't realize is the narrow die gets pounded down into the cast iron here. And I know it's probably pretty hard to see that this one's probably pounded down in there about a quarter of an inch, which is very typical. What you do is take the die out and then grind. I use an abrasive uh, uh, cutoff wheel in a skill saw uh, level this up pretty good but, but not perfect and get most of this out of there and then just uh, uh, what I learned from Dick Carlson was just chisel the rest away until you have a flat surface and then buy a new lower die. The, uh, this uh, model of hammer uh, the, the height of the two dies is supposed to be three inches each. I measured these the top one is two and three quarters the bottom one is only one and seven eighths so anyway three and three is six and so uh, that's getting pretty short and so any shorter and the toggle link here and all the way you can see it would be hitting in fact I think it's just touched this part of the uh, guide or the wraparound guide just barely so this this uh, set of dies shouldn't really be used anymore especially with nothing in between them okay uh, it needs it needs a new lower die probably a new pair of dies but a new lower die and it'd be going actually if you never put anything in there thinner than uh, probably three-eighths of an inch it'd work just fine as it is but you can't guarantee that so at any rate what's good uh, when you wiggle the the uh, uh, clutch here uh, there's maybe ten thousandths play in there, fifteen at the very outside, which is not bad at all. Uh, I couldn't detect any slop in the main journals here. There's still plenty of shims left. Uh, I didn't take it apart to see if there were any cracks in there or not. But I did oil it profusely, by the way, except usually these uh, the clutch facings are run wet. This has got the old dandy belting in it, and it works just fine, uh, just as it is. Uh, the pivot here was frozen up and I freed that up and uh, oiled it. If you wanted to you could uh, ream that out and put a, a new one in there but it's going to be fine probably only last another 50-60 years. Uh, when Sid rebuilds them he puts a sturdier uh, rod here. I think he uses like a piece of conduit or half inch water pipe so that this guy doesn't bend but it's working fine. Uh, I did not take it apart so I don't know how much wear there might be here in these pins and those pins right there uh, a new owner probably should take it apart and see the ram uh, there is some slop in the ram let's see if I can get back a little further I hope you can hear that but it really isn't very detrimental uh, to the operation. The uh, holes for oil, again they're probably kind of hard to see, where's my finger, right there. There's there are holes here and then up at the top and they need to be kind of just cleaned out with a stick. There are also four holes, two on each side here for the toggle links and they're kind of plugged up so I oiled the toggle links directly a lot. They would need to be rotted off also. Not a very big deal. This particular one, I think, as I mentioned to the guy who was interested, has a three-phase motor on it. And I think it's a two-horse, 220-volt, three-phase. And uh, it works. So I've got the thing sitting on pipes so that I can handle it around in the shop. 
so I'm not going to run it real hard, but I will turn it on and I will beat on a piece of wood here. Uh, I did beat on some hot iron the other day when we had the club here, uh, just to show that the uh, hammer does work. Hang on. Well, actually what I'll do is, I've got a three-phase cable hooked up, goes over to the other side of the shop, and on the wall there's two big uh, boxes that are full of capacitors and a couple of relays, and over in the corner where you can't see it is a five-horse motor sitting on the floor that uh, provides uh, three-phase for the shop. So I'll go turn that on. And I don't know if you can even see the motor over in the corner there, but anyway, there's one over there. That's all that takes. Now we have three-phase power, so we'll go over to the hammer here, and uh, I should be holding on with both hands, sort of, but I've got a piece of wood here, and uh, we'll fire it up, and it runs. It doesn't argue much. Let me go around. And uh, since it's on pipes, I put a board under here to make it easier for my heel to rest a little bit. And Notice the ta tump ta tump ta tump. That's the sign that uh, Sid says uh, is indicative of the machine needing a new spring. Um, it also could be that the shims right here in between the uh, wraparound guide and the base need to be some of them being removed to tighten up the ram. But uh, uh, Sid always recommends if you have, if, you know, if the hammer hasn't been run in a long time, replace the spring. And a little giant, little giant hammer.com has all those parts. That's I think it's about 50, 60 bucks for a spring. Dies, I forgot what the price is. Uh, a simple drawing die for this machine probably, I don't know what it is. I was going to say 150 bucks, but I don't even want to guess. But there's the hammer. It goes around, it runs, it would hammer. One might get rid of the ta dut ta dut ta dut just by adjusting the throw here, okay? But I seriously uh, wouldn't want to do anything uh, serious with it until I clean up this die cavity. And what you do is you get that nice and flat again and then put a plate in there that makes up for the difference. Like if you went down a quarter inch, you'd put a quarter inch plate in there and that brings it back up to the base height for a new die. And again, a new die, a lower die would be three inches tall, so this one here has lost a whole uh, inch and an eighth of net height, because I just measured the height above what should have been the base, not the quarter inch that it's further beat down in there. So that's kind of an analysis of this uh, particular trip hammer. Uh, there could be some wear right here, uh, I don't know, people file down this cap if there is, didn't seem to be much of a, a noise to it. I don't think it even needs uh, rebabbiting of the clutch, there's not much wear in there, especially once you uh, grease it up, which you do on a regular basis, and the Gandhi belting looks pretty good to me. So there you have it. And this one doesn't have grease cirques, it has oil holes all over the place. So. Uh, Fred Kaler used to say he liked oil better than grease because if oil flowed out of some, got squeezed out and you let it sit, the oil could flow back in, whereas when grease gets squeezed out, it's gone forever. So that's it. Little giant, old style, 25 pound hammer, serial number 284, uh, built in 1910.